For me, crafting with Games Workshop terrain kits has been ruined. Forever. I was lucky enough to get access to Zorpazorp's famed mountain of plastic and construct Minas Tirith in Minas Tirith. Having access to a near limitless supply of components was so much fun and my builds were only limited by my imagination and the time available to me. I tried to make off with some of the Zorp Zorp Horde, the shenanigans of which you can check out at the end of this video. My cutting plan was thwarted and so unfortunately when I returned home it was back to the reality of my normal person amount of plastic. I had assembled some ruins from the Battle of Osgiliath box and could only afford to buy one set each of the Gondor Tower and Mansion kits. New Zealand prices are crazy. I had the idea to build a South Gondor themed board featuring a ruined outpost guarding the Harad Road. It's time to squeeze all I can out of these kits. I'm Adam Haig and this is 3D Games. I started by clipping out the tower and mansion sprues. Unlike some people I know, I didn't need a team for this and had everything cleaned up in an evening after work. I got stuck in and started assembling the tower. I wanted to heavily convert this and really lean into the ruined look. To do this I would need to hack into the plastic and use plaster to create some awesome looking rubble. I've used thermoplastic moldy material like blue stuff to recast simple components like ruins and to make textured bases. This does have limitations however, so I decided to give silicone mold to go. I wanted to cast half of this tower so that I could break it up and have multiple levels with a playable interior. The trouble with the tower kit is that once it's assembled, the inside is completely inaccessible and therefore useless. Also, the walls are really thin and don't have any detail, it just looks like plastic. I also wanted to cut up half of the plastic kit to combine with the broken up chunks of plaster to create the look of a tower that has collapsed and crumbled over time. Okay, so obviously recasting is evil. Don't do it. I'm not going to be selling anything, I'm not even going to cast the whole product. I just had this crazy idea that requires part of the model to be cast in plaster rather than plastic. The last thing I want to do is to be put onto some kind of Games Workshop blacklist for accidentally promoting illegal recasting. Because of course the whole point of this channel was to try and get my hands on some of that sweet sweet review stock. Please Games Workshop, send me some review stock please. Okay, in very typical me fashion, unfortunately, I have changed my mind after I've glued it. What I'm trying to do, I want to have half so I can make a mold. I mean, oh. I mean, it's supposed to look ruined anyway, right? Success! To make the mold, I would need to seal any gaps where the silicone can flow through, so I traced and cut some plastic card for the bottom and top of the tower and hot glued it in place. I needed to make a container to pour the silicone into, so I used foam board to create a rough box large enough to contain the tower. I traced the shape of the tower and pressed clay around the edges. The idea was to press the tower into the clay to stop the silicone from flowing underneath. I also used clay to block the windows and any gaps at the top of the tower before pressing it firmly into the clay on the base. The walls of the box were sealed into place with lots of hot glue. I really didn't want that silicone to leak out anywhere. I wasn't sure how much silicone the tower would use, so I prepared another mould to make the most of any potential leftovers. I made this in exactly the same way with the roof dome pressed into clay. Again I used lots of hot glue to seal the box, being very careful not to get any on the roof itself and ruin those lovely details. No. Damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it. Oh no! After spending an annoying amount of time painstakingly removing glue from the shingles, I was ready to pour some silicone. Okay, so I've got my little box set up here to make my mold. Um, I've got this one ready to go just in case I have some left over. Now the idea is I've got to mix these two things together, a uh, one to one ratio. Um, it's got six minute working time, so, and then a 20 minute curing time, so I'm going to have to hustle, I'm going to have to be real quick, uh, and make sure I don't mess it up. I was stressing out and super worried about this after making a dozen mistakes leading up to the silicone pour, 
but I went all in anyway, pouring in everything I had. I would only get one shot, you only get one shot. and it would start setting after only six minutes. I quickly poured the goopy pink stuff all over the tower. Oh, okay, this isn't good. After pouring in all my silicone, it was a little shy of covering the tower, and so I panicked and started jamming bits of foam board into the mold to reduce the empty space with the hope of raising the level. What I didn't notice was that the level was actually dropping. Oh god damn, it's getting inside it. It's getting inside it. This is when my prefrontal cortex completely shut down, and I desperately tried to salvage what was looking to be an utter disaster. Maybe if I flipped it upside down that might work. Whoops, okay, no, now it's leaking out the bottom. How about hot glue sealing the bottom? Ugh, what an idiot. Oh my god, this is a disaster! F this is an absolute... Oh my god, look at that, it's full of it. All I had left to do was to salvage what I could and pour it into my dome roof mould. So after half an hour of feeling like I had not only wasted $70 worth of silicone, I had also ruined my tower. I set about cutting the roof mould out of its foam board box. Okay, that's a lot of silicone for one tiny little mold. <laughs> oh, it's a big chunk. <laughs> it's like I've used a little bit more than was probably necessary. Anyway, so I guess can see here it's it's gone through the gap here so it would have all flowed through these little gaps so the moral of the story here is seal all the gaps like crazy so after i swept away my hopes and dreams of a better terrain building future i plunged myself further into financial ruin by ordering two more kilos of pinky silk if you'd like to support me to make more reckless financial decisions, then please consider joining my Patreon, linked in the description. I truly appreciate the support. You can also join my Facebook group and Instagram, linked in the description. Purchasing your hobby supplies through my affiliate links is another great way to help me. Listed in the description are links to Element Games in the UK, Amazon in the USA, Mighty Ape and Kapiti Hobbies in New Zealand, and Gap Games in Australia. Please hit like and subscribe and hit the bell. Let me know what other ridiculous hobby projects I should try in the comments below. The lesson learned from my costly mistake was to pour crazy amounts of glue into every join on the inside of the tower. And I mashed in a whole lot of clay at the top of the tower. I also added some polystyrene spaces to reduce the amount of silicone needed in the box. With double the amount of silicone, I would potentially have two shots at making this tower mold work. This time I would try pressing the tower down into the silicone, that way I would be able to spot any leaks as they happened. I started by pouring in a thin layer to line the bottom of the container. I anxiously kept an eye out for leaks. Thankfully everything held well and there were no slime monsters to speak of. So once it had set, I poured in some more onto the previous layer and pressed the tower down into the silicone. As I carefully filled up the container around the tower, I realised that the tower would float, obviously, and I needed some way to weigh it down. So I quickly ran off to get a couple of weights. Here we go. I've weighed it down because it started floating. Then it started flowing over and started filling it up. Another bit of disaster in the making but I think I've saved it. After an anxious half hour wait, it was time to cut away the foam board to reveal what would hopefully be an amazing tower mold. It worked, thank goodness. I did notice, however, that some air bubbles must have been trapped by the ridges that run along the length of the tower. Drizzling the silicone along these areas before submerging the tower in the mold would have fixed this. Oh well, another lesson I guess. I have to say that I love the detail that these molds pick up. They are much sharper and more defined than what blue stuff can capture. The question remained of course, would these details translate to my casting medium? I had decided to stick with good old cheap casting plaster for my board, seeing as I will be using it for ruins and rubble, and the whole point was to try and keep costs down. So, after spraying the moulds with soapy water, I poured in the plaster. 
I made the plaster much thinner than I usually would to help it flow into all those fine details. I used an old brush to dislodge any air bubbles by brushing around the inside of the mould. To make the inside of the tower hollow, I pressed a rattle can into the plaster and held it in place until the plaster became thick enough to hold it. Okay, so even with cheap plaster, the details translated incredibly well. Dental plaster might work a bit better, and I'm sure resin would work great. Again, my mission was to keep costs down, and seeing as I had already tripled my budget for silicone, I was unwilling to spend any more money on resin. Okay, so I've successfully managed to cast half of the tower in plaster, and now it's time to stop. It's hammer time. Once I had enough broken chunks, I took to each piece with a retractable blade. This I hacked into the edges at different angles to give those broken edges more of a damaged masonry look, and to create interesting gouges and cracks. I used a razor saw to cut pieces out of the plastic kit to add to my pile of rubble. I then roughly laid out the broken pieces to form a ruined tower that has collapsed down the cliff face. Adding the chunks of plaster adds the extra look of destruction and rubble and really brings it to life. To make the standing tower with a playable interior, I covered the inside with plaster and pressed a rattle can into it to create a smooth cylindrical shape. There were gaps left behind in the plaster, but that'll just add to the broken look. I used the can to score straight horizontal lines with a craft knife. Then cut vertical lines to create a simple brick pattern. I had made a floor with a blue stuff mould which I then pressed into the inside of the tower. I then loosely assembled some of the broken pieces of plaster to form the broken side of the tower. I intend to hack into this some more before gluing it securely in place. I love the idea of having extra levels for arches to fire from. I'm really happy with how this is starting to look and I want to make it in a way that allows troops another access point to climb up onto the high ground. I can't wait to start painting and texturing this board utilizing the Gondor Mansion Kit. Thanks so much for watching and I look forward to showing you my completed board here at 3D Games Wargaming and Terrain. Thanks again and good hobbying.